Yo, what's going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay, so welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about a little technique that you can use while out riding that can make things a little bit more smoother, and that's throttle blipping. So what is throttle blipping? Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but it's a technique that a lot of racers use, and you can absolutely use it on the road. It's one of those things where you'll find some riders use it all the time, some don't use it at all, and then some are a mixture. Some use it, some don't. I'm kind of the latter. I sometimes use it, I don't always use it. There are certain situations where I will and where I won't. You know, if I'm approaching somewhere where I need to do a lot of front braking, I won't necessarily do it. You can do it, but it's a little bit awkward because you're having to blip the throttle and brake at the same time. So it's not really something I tend to do when in that situation. But if you're just slowing down through town, just normal riding situations, then yeah, it's absolutely fine. So what throttle blipping is, is basically a technique where you blip the throttle when you change down a gear. And what that does is that raises the revs to keep them roughly the same from when you change down. If you keep the revs up, what happens, rather than that engine braking going boop, it goes like that. It comes down nice and gradually and smoothly. It's all there to make changing down a lot smoother. So when you're changing down the gears, if you're the type of person that doesn't like engine braking, this could be the technique for you. So we're gonna go along to our little car park. Now, I'm not too sure how the mic's gonna be sounding just now. I've changed position in my helmet because it was really annoying. <laughs> I've also changed mic again. I went back to the Purple Panda, purely because the mic that I was using before, it's a good mic. I think it's starting to get a wee bit faulty because I was getting a lot of kind of blipping in and out. But the main reason I didn't like it is the actual physical size of the mic is quite big, you know. Um, so it's not ideal to have next to your mouth, you know, it feels like you're chewing on a gobstopper or something. But anyway, we're going to go down to our little car park and we're going to have a quick explanation and demonstration of throttle blipping. And then we'll go out on the road and I'll show you how to do it. And then it's entirely up to you, the rider, to decide if it's something you want to do. And if it is, is it something you're going to do all the time, sometimes, or not at all? I've not changed my clock back yet. I was going to say, what? Nearly half one already? I noticed the other night I was, uh, I was out doing some errands with the kids and it was like five o'clock and it was dark. I was like, what? It's that time of year, dudes, where we have to uh, think about when we're going to be out on the bike. You know, it's that horrible time of year when you have to go, I want to go out, but... <laughs> Shoulda, you know, weather's going to be changing soon, it's getting dark by tea time. I mean, hopefully you watch my Riding in the Dark video so you feel a bit more comfortable about that. So normally what you would do is when you change down, you know, you would off the throttle and in with the clutch, change down, clutch back out, back on, alright? So, but what happens with that is when you change down and you let the clutch out, if you're not going back on the throttle straight away, the bike will go because you've got engine braking. So what you can do is this technique called throttle blipping, and you're basically blipping the throttle. A wee blip like that, okay? Boop. Right, so the actual motion for it is that. That's it. So you come to change down and you go boo like that. Alright, so normally what would happen is if you change down without going on to the throttle, you let the clutch out and the bike will go boo like that. Okay? By the way, my motorcycle engine impressions are not accurate, all right? <laughs> Just a wee disclaimer there. If you're doing throttle blipping, what happens is when you do that, the revs go, they come up, and then they match the revs when you're changing down. So rather than going like that, you go nice and easy. This is something I used to do a lot when I was learning to throttle blip. When you do that, you know, you're instantly going to be back on the throttle. What I was doing is I would change down, do my throttle blip, so I'd go boop, and subconsciously my right hand would go back on the throttle without thinking about it. You know, my brain's just went, oh, I've changed up or I've changed down or whatever, back on the throttle, when I was trying to learn to throttle blip and I should be off the throttle and don't put the throttle back on. So I was going boop, and just as I put it back down, 
I went back on the throttle again and you can give yourself a wee fright doing that because you've just dropped the gear and then you've went like that and the bike just goes it tends to kind of shoot off like a rocket so uh, <laughs> just remember that when you're throttle blipping when you change down don't go back on the throttle straight away you know, you might have to, depending on the situation, but make sure if you are doing that, you know, you're nice and smooth and you're aware that you're doing it. You know, I was going, boop, boop, oh my God. It was that quick, you know, it was like throttle blip back on and it was something I had to kind of get my head around and go, why am I doing that? And it was just because my hands were that used to doing, you know, off the throttle, changing and then back on. Make sure that when you're coming down in pace, you're changing at the right time, you know, like what you normally would, you know, um, but to make throttle blipping more effective, getting the timing right is pretty essential. So again, all you're doing is, you're, when the clutch pulls in, you're doing that, all right? Now, it might take you a wee while just to get used to how much blipping you actually have to do. You know, you can do a tiny wee bit or you can do a bit more. You don't want to crank it right open and have the thing screaming, all right? A good twist. You know, you can get a little twist or a good twist or a full twist. A kind of good twist is what you're kind of aiming for, so you're like that, you know. It's pretty much the opposite of changing up, if you think about it. Right, if you're changing up, you've got the throttle on. And when you change up, you go like that. Alright? You're essentially doing the opposite of what you're doing as you're doing that. So your hands just go in a different direction, all right? So what we'll do is we'll jump out in the road and we'll have a wee practice. I'll show you some situations where you can use it and then it's up to you if it's something you want to, something you want to use. Now it is obviously a very, very subtle thing, but like we said back in the car park, sometimes you can be a little bit too aggressive with the blips, all right? So ideally, the kind of blip you want to do is about Hear it? That's about it. Less works as well, but you know, you don't really want to go past that. You don't want to have the thing doing that. You know, you don't want that. <laughs> Just a little is all you need, all right? So we're naturally slowing down and blip and down a gear. Blip and down a gear. So when you do first practice it, go somewhere quiet. A nice quiet stretch of road where you can get up to say maybe 30, 40 miles per hour. Maybe put the bike in fourth gear. You know, you don't really need to be in that sort of gear when you're doing 30 or 40, but it gives you a reason to switch down and practice it. Obviously, when I say you don't need to be in that kind of gear for that speed, it depends on the bike. You know, obviously, if you're on a little 125, it might make a little bit more sense, but the throttle blip, regardless of the size of bike you're on, is still a technique that can be used. Get it? See, I mean, the engine braking was pretty much eliminated there. So I put the bike in a gear that I don't need, so I can hear the bikes a little bit gur, 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 gur. Obviously, when you hear that, you need to change. It's very, very subtle. It is very, very subtle. It's not the thing that's totally obvious. And some people might think to themselves, do you really need it? Because I've done it before and I didn't really feel much difference, then, you know, that's absolutely perfect. You've tried it and you don't see the point in using it, so you don't have to use it, all right? But it is a very, very subtle thing. It's not going to be a life-changing technique. Right, I can feel the bike naturally starting to slow down, so throttle blip. Practice going down the gears without throttle blipping, and then do it with throttle blipping, and you will notice the difference. Approaching traffic lights, you know, blip down, blip down. Every time I come through the town, there is a new set of roadworks. Oh my god. So much grit here, dudes. Oh my god. Be wary of this stuff when you're out riding. If you see it, don't ride on it, you know. Go into position one or three, depending on what's the safest. Don't ride on that stuff. See, like that, look at that. Oh my god. I'm waiting until I need to change down. Don't change down before you need to. Because then it isn't as effective. But like all aspects of learning to ride dudes, it is just something that takes a wee bit of time, a wee bit of practice. If you're not the most confident on clutch yet, don't try it. You know, wait until you're more confident with your clutch and then you can start practicing throttle blipping. You know, don't try and rush it. Just wait until you're ready and then it'll be easier as well, you know. But anyway dudes, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, on throttle blipping or anything related to riding or even any of your mods 
feel free to get in touch, leave me a comment, get me on social media. I do have a Mod 1 series going to be starting in the next few weeks because I know there are a few people in the channel and on Discord, I'll leave a link to that below, that are currently prepping for their Mod 1s. So I'm going to be getting a wee series done. It's going to be similar to the Mod 2. It's not going to be quite as long because the Mod 1 is literally a 10 minute test, less than that. So I will have a series coming up on the Mod 1. In the next week or two, it's going to take me a bit of time to film it and edit it, so I'm going to try and get it up as quickly as possible. I'm not going to spread it out over the course of, you know, if it's, if it's three videos, I'm not going to spread it out over the course of three weeks. I'll get the three videos or four videos, whatever it is, put up in the same week. Because if you're training for your Mod 1, you don't want to be waiting a month for a video, you know. So I'll, as soon as they're recorded and edited, I'll get them put up, uh, maybe daily, so you can watch it, practice it, and then come back for the next one. Anyway dudes, hopefully you've enjoyed this, if you have guys, give it a thumbs up, I really do appreciate every single one of your likes, and of course, if you want to see all my videos, click on that subscribe button, and ring the bell while you're there, that way you'll get notified every time I upload a video. But until next time dudes, stay safe, ride safe, and take it easy.